Word is on. Yes, it is. Where are you? There you are. All right. Um, doesn't say make co-host. It says make host. So why don't let me let everybody in before I switch that over. Okay. And just, I don't know why. I, I would thought you could be a, a co-host. But it won't just let you um share like like give me share screen options. I'll take a quick look again okay. at that. But usually it's just things that you get as a co-host, okay. which is what I was shooting for. Uh, let's see, chat. Yeah, All right, well, I'm going to click on host. I'm going to let Kaylee in. And we're going to go there. All right. You are now the host, I believe, which should allow you to screen share. Um, I still have screen share, so I guess we're co hosting. Um, okay. I don't know if I'll be able to let people in. I'll let you know if I see anything different than what you might see. Right now I see a, a, a list, but I don't know. I don't have any buttons over there. So, all right, well, it should be recording and you're hosting and now it's 6.32. So again, as we usual, thanks everybody for joining us on a Sunday evening for Ni Coach Nicole's nutrition meeting for the month of March is Sunday, March 27th. Um, we are going to focus a little bit, and I don't know what order Nicole's gonna do this in, on a topic that, that, we just, that her and I discussed about some protein options for those that are less uh, excited about just the sta staple of meat options out there, and then to go over some of the responses and topics that were in the nutrition survey that we sent out to everybody. So uh, we will have another meeting in April. We do not have that date set up. We'll, Cole and I will get that out to you as soon as we can. So I'm good. All right, let's do it. Hello guys, happy Sunday. So I'm gonna jump straight into it. I'm gonna share my screen so y'all can see the presentation. Um, let's jump in. Present. Okay, so we are going to talk today about protein and all the things that it does for us, what it is, how to identify it, how to find it, all things protein. Protein is my favorite macro. We'll do a quick little crash course again on what macros are, so y'all know what the heck I'm talking about. Um, oh, I hear some noise, um, but we're going to jump into it. So... We're going to talk about what is protein, you know, what does it look like? How do we find it? What does it do for us? Why do we need it? How much do we need? Um, the timing of when we need it. So we'll kind of go through everything that includes. How can I move? Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to get a good view on my screen so I can still see you guys and still see my screen. Okay, so what is it? So when we look at our food and we're looking at a label of food and let's say you have a protein bar and you flip over that protein bar and you look at the nutrition label and it says that this bar has 100 calories. So your 100 calories are coming from three macronutrients. And that's, I don't know if y'all remember this from when we originally started doing these chats, but I am a macro focused nutrition coach. So I focus on making sure our diets are balanced between all three macros because the three macro groups are where our calories come from. Um, and we don't want to eliminate one of them or reduce one of them. Our body is intended to process all three of them differently. So we want to make sure we're giving our bodies the balanced portion so that it can use those three how, it's in, how our body is intended. So your three macros are fats, carbs, and protein. Protein is my favorite macro. It's found in all living things. 
It is what makes our bodies do the things that we need it to do. So it's important in our muscle growth, repair, and recovery. And I know that's what we primarily speak about with y'all being athletes and why the protein intake is important for us. But it also is what provides our skin, our nails, our hair. Um, All of the things made up of our body is made up of protein. So where can we find it and how do we get it in our diets? So primarily your biggest protein sources are going to be meats, seafood, again, living things. You can find smaller amounts of protein in vegetables, legumes, and then obviously a protein supplement. And we're going to go through those, all of those protein sources and what those look like, what the best ones are, um, how to navigate picking your protein sources, picking a good protein supplement. We have some label comparisons that we'll go through. Um, So when we're looking at protein and where we're going to find it and where you're going to I get it. You want to be looking for complete proteins and nutrient dense proteins. So we can find proteins in all kinds of things that may not be the healthiest option or the best option for when we're looking at our proteins. So we want to start figuring out what's going to be the best option where we can optimize the sources that it's coming from. So looking at the better protein sources, those complete proteins. A complete protein means that it contains all essential amino acids. And I know I've talked about, y'all have asked in the past about um, supplements. What kind of supplements should we be taking? And I always suggest to athletes um, to try and take in a BCAA. I don't know if y'all remember me saying, calling those things out by name, a branch chain amino acid. Um, you can get that in a supplement form, but you're going to be able to get your essential amino acids through protein sources from food. We like to take an additional amino acid, branch chain amino acid as a supplement because it's helpful with repair and recovery to the muscles. But if you're getting a good complete protein, you're just doubling it. You're getting those complete essential amino acids as well. So aminos can only be found in your food or those supplements, and they're the building blocks of your protein. So when we're looking at the protein we're taking in, a protein is built up of these aminos, and it's needed for our body to function. So examples of a complete protein where you can get it in your diet would be things like eggs, fish, chicken, turkey, beef, and pork. Again, meats, living animals, where it's coming from. I know we're going through a little bit of like a science lesson right now, but we're going to get to stuff that's going to completely pertain to you. But I want you to make sure you know what is in a protein, where you're getting from and why they're so important. So looking at nutrient dense proteins, we just figured out what a complete protein is and where you're going to find it and those meats and those animal sources. But let's find out what are going to be the best nutrient dense. There's lean meats. And I know you've talked, you've heard me say the lean meat versus your higher fat meats. We had a presentation on fat specifically and we went through the saturated fats, the unsaturated fats. Um, As a reminder, those saturated fats are coming from meats. So when you, again, let's talk about that nutrition label again, you flip over that label on a bar or on something you're eating and it says fat at the top, And then it's going to list trans fats and saturated fats. Your saturated fats are going to come from things like meats. So even though, you know, let's say let's go into a steak. So even though a steak is high in protein and it's a complete protein, it also has really, it's really high in saturated fats, which can be harmful to our bodies. So that's why we want to reduce too much red meat. So we don't want to have as many greasy hamburgers as maybe a chicken sandwich The protein between a chicken breast and a burger, a red meat burger, going to be pretty same as far as the protein grams, but one is going to be much higher in fat than the leaner than the chicken. So beef is higher in fat than your chicken. And while we want the protein, we also want to make sure we're getting that nutrient dense. The chicken's going to be a little bit better for us because it doesn't have the fat. Y'all follow me so far? 
So high amounts of saturated fats found in meats can increase our blood pressure, can lead to heart disease, and it can increase cholesterol levels. Those are all things that you may not have to worry about right now, but it's something if you keep putting those fattier meats in your body, it's going to be something that can really be harmful to your health in the future. So examples of nutrient dense, lean protein sources, complete protein sources is going to be a skinless chicken. So boneless, skinless chicken breast, um, turkey, you can do ground turkey instead of your ground red meat, um, fish, shrimp, seafood, those things are going to be your leanest options. Got it? Protein sources, which ones are the good ones? Which ones are the bad ones? The ones that just aren't going to be the best options. Okay, so we're going to now go into maybe some of y'all are vegetarians, maybe we don't eat meat you can still get plenty of protein from vegetable sources or um, non-meat sources. So soy products, soybeans is, soybeans are very high in protein and they are used and made into things that are like meat substitutes. So tofu, tempeh, and soy milk. Those are all going to be high protein sources, but it's not coming from a meat. Um, I mentioned legumes in the last slide as a protein source. Legumes are your beans, peas, edamame, chickpeas, which are, is the bean or the, the little bean that's made in hummus. So those are all going to be great protein sources outside of meat options. Um, other protein sources that aren't meatless would be nuts, almonds, cashews, we want to avoid peanuts. Those are kind of the trash nut, but almonds, cashews, walnuts, pecans, those are all great sources of some additional protein. Seeds, whole grains, and then meat substitutes. So there's some meat substitutes at the grocery store. You can find um, two of the brands I know off the top of my head are going to be um, Beyond Meat. And the other one I can't think of right now, all of a sudden I got distracted. Someone was joining at letting people in the group. Um, but those meatless substitutes, you can get them at the grocery store in the meat section. They're meatless, but they maybe it looks like ground meat and you can have it like you would have a taco. They tend to be really high in fats, but it is a, it is a meat substitute if you were looking for protein otherwise. Okay, let's do some label comparison of protein supplements. I get asked a lot, um, Izzy, I'm gonna get to you in just one second. Um, protein supplements, I get asked a lot, um, what is your favorite protein source? What is your favorite protein powder, um, protein shake? What are your go-tos? I tell people when you're looking at a supplement, it is supplementing your diet or usually something specific. So we're having a protein supplement, meaning you need to get more protein than what you're taking in from your foods that you're sitting down and chewing. So we're gonna add in this supplement. When I'm looking at a protein supplement, like a protein powder or protein shake, I look at the labels and I wanna make sure that that protein supplement isn't gonna be super high in the other two macros. So I'm gonna look at my fat line and I'm going to look at my carbohydrate line. There's total carbohydrates and total fat line. Fats at the very top, total carbs is in the middle. The reason I look there first is because if my protein supplement is very high in fats or carbs, then I'd rather go chew something and eat real food, right? Um, if you're supplementing, you want that supplement to really be super concentrated in the one thing you're trying to supplement which is the protein. So let's look at these two brands. These are two brands that you can find at most grocery stores. The one on the left, the green label is a brand called Orgain. The one on the right is called Iconic. I can find both of these at Rouse's. Um, the one on the left is plant-based. The one on the right is whey protein, but it is dairy-free. There's no lactose in it. So let's look at them and compare scoop to scoop. So I know the label on the left, the serving size at the top is two scoops, but to compare it to the one on the right, the serving size one scoop to one scoop is going to be this, the comparable weight as far as gram to gram. So when I look at my Orgain label, 
One scoop is two grams of fat. My iconic blue label is half a gram. When I go down to my carbs, one scoop of Orgain is about eight grams of carbs. My iconic is three grams. So already my iconic is less in fat and less in carbs. Then I jump down to the protein line. How much protein am I getting for one scoop? For one scoop of this Orgain, you're getting only 10 and a half grams of protein. For one scoop of the Iconic, I'm getting 20 grams. That's the game changer. And that's the piece you want to look at when you're looking for a protein source. If you're supplementing with a protein powder, you probably aren't just needing 10 grams. You're probably needing a bunch more for, if we're supplementing, because I can get 10 grams by eating a few pieces of rolled up deli meat, turkey deli. So I'm supplementing for one scoop at only 90 calories, less than one gram of fat, only three grams of carbs. I'm getting 20 grams of protein. So the label on the right is the one I would choose. I actually have that supplement in my pantry right now and I put it in my smoothies. And y'all see that comparison? Y'all see that side by side? Why one looks a little bit better than the other? So that's something I want to look at when you're looking at um, protein supplements. I know there's another brand called, um, oh, I think it's called Garden of Life. I think that's one of the brands that um, Whole Foods carries. Um, and that one is also a better option than Orgain. Uh, okay, Izzy had a question. What do you think about the fact that soy contains an endocrine disruptor? Yes, so that's the other thing, especially for females, we don't wanna take in too much soy. So if you are vegetarian and you do need to be taking in additional protein from plant-based beans, those types of things, I would not suggest taking in all of your protein from a soy-based product. Switch it up, get it, get it elsewhere. A little bit is not terrible. We don't want to overdo the soy for sure. Um, good question. We good here? Any questions up to this point? Anything about the um, proteins label? Which supplements better? How to find one? What to look for? So yeah, even with shakes, like I buy some shakes and keep them in the fridge, like the pre-made protein shakes. Um, as a snack, if I need, um, if I know that I need more protein in my day, again, check out your labels, always look for that added sugar. I know I go on and on about the added sugars. Make sure that your protein shake isn't a milkshake. Um, so check the added sugar line and then check out where your fats and your carbs are, what that number is when you compare it to your protein you want in your supplement, that protein to be the highest concentrated thing that you're taking in. So far, so good? Okay, so how much do we need? So there is something called a recommended daily allowance or your RDA. Now for teens, your recommended daily allowance is gonna be higher than maybe your parents. Um, for athletes, it's even higher. So you guys fall into a high bracket being teen athletes, okay? So having a protein supplement on hand, like a shake or powder is going to be really helpful if you know that you're not eating a ton of meat at your meals. Um, so there's two ways to look at your recommended daily allowance. You can do some math and figure it out based off of your weight, or you can do it based off of the daily calories you receive that you're taking in. So for you and your age group and your activity level, it's going to be 20 to 25% of your daily calories. And let's say that your calories are around two to 3,000 a day. Okay. Or this is where I tend to go when I calculate macros and protein for my clients. A high protein diet would be one gram per your body weight. So what you weigh right now is how many grams of protein you should be taking in. So if you weigh 120 pounds, your goal should be 120 grams of protein a day. It may be a little bit more if you do the math of 20 to 25% of your daily calories, but I'm sure most of y'all are not counting calories, nor do I suggest that you guys start counting your calories, but it may be beneficial for y'all to kind of maybe keep track of how much protein you're taking in in your day. And 100 and 
or I'm sorry, one gram per your body weight would be a good place to start. Okay, does that make sense? Moving on, when do we need it? How often do we need it? You wanna be taking in protein at every meal. Every meal, you're getting a protein source. So at breakfast, maybe that's eggs or egg whites. Um, maybe you're putting, um, maybe you're having breakfast sausage, which you can get, pork is a higher saturated fat protein source. Like I mentioned that red meat, like a steak would be. They make breakfast turkey sausage. If you wanna try switching it out, you could switch out your bacon, which is gonna be again, has protein in it because it's pork and it's meat, but it's really high, <clears throat> excuse me, in fat. So switching to a turkey bacon would be an option. Just finding these leaner meats that are going to be a little bit heart, heart healthier for you. Um, so getting it every meal. So breakfast, it could be your eggs. It could be some turkey bacon. It could be some turkey sausage. At lunch, it could be chicken. It could be turkey on a sandwich. It could be shrimp. It could be anything, any kind of meat. Dinner, same thing. You just don't want to skip it. If you're having a salad, um, not a side salad, but if a salad is your meal, make sure you're loading it up with additional protein. Don't get a side salad with just veggies on it. If it's a side, that's fine. But if it's your main meal, you want to make sure you're loading it up and you're including that macro at every meal. Nutritional timing in relation to your workouts. I know we talk about this a lot and there seems to be some confusion of when our protein should be taking in. If that's pre, meaning before your workout, or if it's post, meaning after your workout, ideally we want it post. So once you've completed your workout, because we want the carbs, we want a heavier complex carb pre-workout for the energy. And then you get that post also, sometimes drinking a protein shake may not sit great on our stomachs before we jump in the pool, right? So post is going to be the best timing. You're going to be giving that additional protein, those aminos to your muscles for repair, recovery, and regrowth, all right? Um, we want it evenly distributed through your day. So let's say your goal is to get 120 grams of protein. You want to evenly distribute that through your day as best as possible, right? It's going to be nearly impossible for you to make sure you get the exact amount of grams at each meal. But if you make sure you're getting it at each meal, maybe having a protein shake somewhere along the way um, or a smoothie or something, evenly distributing that protein and giving your body constant protein feeling throughout the day is going to be really important. And that's kind of my recommendation to most people. You may not have a ton of carbs at every meal. You may not have a ton of fat at every meal, but if you can make sure you're evenly distributing that protein throughout the day and we're not skipping it at any meal, that's the goal. Okay. Questions about protein. When to have it, how to have it. Um, you don't like meat and you need more of it. What's what you got for me? Anybody have any questions? Crickets. Should I go into y'all's questions and answers? Oh, here we go. How do you know how many grams of meat? How many grams of protein is in a meat or how um, do you know how much weight the piece of meat is, amount in a serving? Okay, great. So Google, you can Google it. Um, I have a, I will post this. Let me write this down because I will forget, but I have a little cheat sheet that I give to a lot of my clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one about protein and how to know how many grams you're getting in each serving. So for example, maybe four ounces of chicken is going to be about maybe 27 grams of protein. And I have that kind of broken down for each meat. And so about four ounces is going to be about a cup. Okay. So you can kind of use that as a baseline tracker. So four ounces is about a cup, maybe a little mounded cup, or if you're doing like ground turkey, scoop, if you're doing tacos, a cup or like a fist size is about four ounces. And then four ounces of 
chicken, turkey is somewhere between 20 to 30 grams of protein. But I will post my protein little cheat sheet guide on the new wave website under the nutrition tab, or I think it's under the parents corner and then under, then it's under nutrition. So I'll post that so you guys can have that. That might be helpful. Let me write this down because I will forget. Protein cheat sheets for new wave. And then Google, you can always say how much protein is in, you know, a cup of shrimp or something. You should be able to find something like that online for sure. Okay, any other questions? There's also, um, this is, I don't really suggest or promote calorie counting for y'all, but if you do wanna start keeping track of your protein and keeping track of that type of thing, not so much calories, but gram wise, there's a, there are a couple macro counting apps available on your phone. So if you wanted to download something like that, so you could really, if you want to make sure, see where your numbers are, if you're hitting those grams, that's always an option too. What else? Any other questions? I'll get into the um, questionnaire that y'all answered for us. See if there's any topics we can touch on real quick. Let me pull up that spreadsheet. Okay, so we have some success stories. Someone said that they switched from Gatorade to other hydration sources with the best suggestions. That's great. So we wanted to eliminate too many sugars from our hydration. Um, someone said that they found that eating a snack with more complex carbs before practice really helped. That's awesome because that's exactly the point of having those complex cars before your, your workout, giving that extra energy. Um, switching out of breakfast was really helpful than to what they were having before. Great, getting some new options, some healthier options, starting our day. If anybody is skipping, anybody's still skipping breakfast? Hopefully not. Hopefully we've switched to something that's really easy and healthy. Um, somebody has used those barbells those protein bars from Trader Joe's that aren't the worst thing ever. You'll know how I feel about a protein bar. Um, and when I started changing my diet to not having too many artificial sugars and eating more clean things, I felt the difference. This is my favorite. I don't know who said this, but this is awesome. I'm so excited. Didn't feel as tired at practice, performed better when they started eliminating artificial sugars. Please don't have Skittles as a pre-workout snack. That would be great. You're just gonna feel it, I promise. Um, most of you said you can successfully eat enough to not be hungry during practice, but some of y'all still are struggling with bringing enough food to make it through practice without being hungry. So I hope that maybe going through that questionnaire and having to answer some of these questions was maybe like a little bit of a ding, ding, ding for y'all and be like, oh yeah, I actually am having a hard time making it through practice without being hungry. This week, maybe I'll pack more. Or maybe you're not packing at all and it's time to really start planning ahead and keeping some things on hand, um, letting know whoever brings you to practice. If you don't drive to practice on your own, can you throw something in the car for me so I know that it's there? Um, having some go-tos that you maybe keep in your bag some crackers on hand, um, peanut butter crackers, some pretzels, something that you know that you can keep in your bag that won't go bad um, for emergencies where you maybe on a day you forgot to pack something. Um, let me scroll over and see what else we got. Um, goals to eat more protein. Well, now you have all the information. We just went through so much protein information that hopefully this is gonna be a great long course season. Um, eat more protein and healthier, eating a vegetable with every meal, stop eating as much candy, I love it. Um, eat more protein. There's a bunch of y'all that said, let's eat more protein. 
Did you guys find that what we just went through was helpful when looking at your protein? Does anybody want to chime in on the chat about, are you confused about what a protein is? Do you know where to get it? Do you know when to get it? Was that, did that help maybe answer some questions about protein for y'all? Cool. <laughs> what else? Let's see. Absolutely. I'm so glad. Please list any future is this topics. Let's see. Incorporating healthy substitutes, meals, snacks for a picky eater. You know what I tell picky eaters? This, actually, there's a couple of you on here that says I'm a picky eater. And I know that we just have some picky eaters in the group. Um, just start trying new things. You may have it in your head that you don't like something, but when was the last time you tried it? So did you, you guys know that your taste buds change every couple of years? Um, that's a real thing. Your taste buds change. What you like and what you dislike change. Um, I can name a ton of things that I wouldn't eat five years ago. Um, and now they're the best. So maybe start trying some of the things that just in your head, you've told yourself that you just don't like. Um, and you may be fine. Um, someone said how to get in protein throughout the day, not just right before practice. I hope today was helpful with explaining ways you can get it in, maybe how to pick a protein shake or protein powder, um, different things that maybe you didn't realize were protein sources now that you know that they are, that's something you can incorporate into your day. Um, yeah. Do we have any other questions? Anything I didn't cover that you maybe wanted to chat about or you were going through the questionnaire and you thought of something you might wanted to bring up tonight? or have me bring up in a future presentation. Okay. Good deal. Ross, do you have anything that you would like to add or need me to cover that maybe I didn't? No, I don't have anything that you didn't cover. Just still think we're going to be as successful as possible through this process when they are a little more active in the communication of it. So it's still, it's going to be on them. I mean, we're giving them opportunities, ways to even type it out where they don't have to say it in front of people. But I mean, we, we all know that this is not, um, this is a never ending process, you know, that this constantly moves. Um, uh, the only thing, I, and I might have said this at a, on another call before, but the best way, you know, for our family to start trying new things was for, you know, the kids to experiment with stuff and I wouldn't order and basically be the fallback if it was, if it just didn't work for them that I would eat it instead of me picking my own meal. Therefore, you know, somebody was going to finish it off or I would pick something that I knew they would like so we could trade back if it didn't work for them. And, and along the way, we have found a lot more options when we eat than we ever oh, would yeah. have if it was just solely their responsibility to be, you know, to start and finish a meal, start and finish a new dish or something like that. So, you know, I tried to take the pressure off because I'm, I'm not, you know, probably was a picky and picky eater wasn't the, the right phrase. It yeah. was like comfortable eater. You know, uh, things on the menu that I've never seen before in, in the past being young was, oh, that what if it's not good? Right. Nowadays, it's, you know, I look for the thing on the menu I've never tried before because I've had a hamburger. I'm good. Like, I don't need another one unless that's really what I'm in the mood for. For example, like last night I had at a restaurant out with some coaches, frog legs and duck strips. Like, nice. No, but nobody. Right. Nobody in the party had had either. So I ordered it and we all shared, you know, so if it was bad, 
oh well i move on if it was good now you have some, another option so yeah it's yeah it's getting out of the comfort zone which is you know part of life and you know even working with with the other swimmers you know if they go out to breakfast and try something different somebody there is going to like it so all you got to do is trade yeah right try something make small changes too like if guys if you guys are used to having sandwiches on white bunny bread and you know that's not the best option but that's just what always happened and it's always been a thing this week try whole wheat what's the worst thing can happen you hate it and but you tried it right um on that topic i mean wheat bread is not what wheat bread used to be and there's so many different brands of it like we don't i don't know that ever we have white bread anymore it's i mean we've we've gone into like the the dave's bread with all the seeds in it and stuff and you know we don't have my jam yeah we have a little bit of plain bagels but there's no white bread left in our house it's that um kind of like your nature zone one that's like honey wheat or something yep you know is so close to what that used to be and it's so much better like you said white bunny bread is like glue it's like paste yeah. like once it gets yeah. wet it's disgusting but some people just you know they still have it in their head that this is what i put my sandwiches on yep it's a mental image it's a it's a good memory from being a child it's all kinds of things and it's you know yeah. we're in a phase with of their lives where it start start you know blazing right your own path and start trying your own things and don't just keep eating what you ate when you were eight um because craft mac and cheese out of a box is trash you know but it's yeah you all get involved with the shopping and the grocery list making and make some suggestions if you guys aren't I can't imagine that you're going to the store and doing most of the shopping, but you can be involved and make suggestions. Yeah. Um, okay. Someone asked, how do you get your BCAA supplement from the store? Um, CVS, Walgreens, um, Walmart, order it on Amazon. Um, you can find a BCAA almost anywhere. Um, yeah. I think my husband orders ours from Amazon. Just be careful. There's going to be some out there that have caffeine in them. You know how I feel about you know, having caffeine. So just make sure um, it's uncaffeinated. Because I think there's some brands out there where they kind of put the BCAs in a pre-workout supplement. No, I don't need that. And if you are still doing pre-workouts, we need to chat. Um, all right, guys. Um, we were pretty quiet tonight, but that just means maybe in April we need to do another uh, Q and A. I don't have a choice but to chat with me. Agreed. You and I will discuss about the next time. So, because yep. we'll have some spring breaks and other things coming up soon, so we'll have to catch the right date. Yep. Nonetheless, we'll be all right. Okay. All right, well, guys. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Good. I'm glad it was helpful. I hope this was good. And guys, please feel free. I know you see, I mean, I hope you see that I post stuff um, with the Facebook page. I mean, the Instagram and that stuff. So you should have my handle on those social media platforms. So if you ever have questions, feel free to reach out. I think my contact information is on new waves website so if y'all do have a question please feel free to reach out um if you need anything and if not we'll stick it in a, a presentation and make it a group combo all righty i'm gonna stop my sharing